Hello and welcome back for episode 23 of the Newbie Dentist Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Omid Azemi. And in this episode, I talked to a good friend of mine who I actually uh, met over Instagram, Dr. Kevin Lasseter, who is a military dentist and has been uh, you know, stationed and working over in Europe for the past few years. Uh, so this episode is a peer-to-peer episode, which I did, uh, you know, to start off the podcast series uh, a while back. Uh, so it's just, you know, talking to another general dentist and going over our day-to-day practice, uh, what kind of things we enjoy doing and don't like doing. Uh, so I do hope you guys enjoy this episode. Uh, the Newbie Dentist podcast is now available on Spotify, which is pretty sweet because it makes it much more accessible to a lot of people who aren't, uh, you know, so familiar with how to download podcasts. So, uh, so if you do have Spotify on your phone, just search Newbie Dentist. Uh, you can follow it there and download all the episodes and all the previous episodes as well. Um, I've been over in Australia. It's been a bit of a tough period for me. I've been waiting for my dental license to come in. And uh, so I haven't actually worked for you know about uh, two, a month and a half now, uh, which is difficult because I was working pretty much every day before. So it's been a big change. But finally, my license did come in a couple of days ago. So I uh, should hopefully begin to start working in the next week or two and get back in, into the grind, so to speak. Um, I do miss it a lot, so I'm excited to get back, get going, start producing, uh, you know, doing dentistry and producing some content to get on the Instagram page as well. Uh, so thank you everyone for who's been reaching out and staying in touch. Uh, if you do support the podcast, please uh, message me. I do love to hear from you guys. So without further ado, I'll jump in and we'll enjoy the episode. Welcome to the Newbie Dentist Podcast, the safe place for newbie dentists to connect, collaborate, learn, and grow. The Newbie Dentist Podcast aims to provide high quality and high value content for all the newbie dentists out there. With your host, Dr. Omid Azami. So, uh, Kevin, I want you to give me a little bit about, uh, tell me a little bit about your background, sort of where you went to dental school, uh, why you decided to pursue dentistry in the first place, and uh, we'll sort of uh, jump off from there and then talk about like what you've been up to recently, which seems pretty cool from our conversation. Sure. Um, so, I, I went to dental school in Arizona at uh, Midwestern University. I was the second class there, so there's like a, a lot of new stuff that yeah. they were still like experimenting on with us, but... Um, over, overall, like it, it's, it, it prepared me pretty well for, for everything that I do. Their big focus was on like putting out like really good general dentists. Um, mm-hmm. and so they, uh, they didn't have any like training programs or anything that at the time, at least that they, um, that they offered. I graduated in 2013. Yeah. So it's been, it's been a couple of years. Um, but so yeah, uh, it was, it was a good school. I, I learned a ton, um, really enjoyed it. Um, really like diverse opportunities. It was nice that they didn't have like a, um, you know, specific training programs. Cause like we, the dental students got to do like pretty yeah, much everything, that's awesome, yeah. everything that we were okay with. And, you know, obviously they have all the, like the specialists at the school. So you can still work with, you know, surgery or perio or pros or something. And, um, so overall it was, it was a pretty good experience. Um, and then after I graduated, um, I uh, started active duty in the army. Oh, nice. Um, yeah. So the, the way that worked is, um, so I was on a health profession scholarship program. So what that means is, uh, they'll pay for dental school. They'll pay for, um, all the tuition, all the books, um, all the fees associated with it. They give you like a small stipend, um, to, to live on during school and then, uh, just do your thing, you know, <laughs> get good yeah. grades, like pass your classes, <laughs> yeah. um, gra- graduate on time. Um, that whole stuff. And then they'll, um, as soon as you finish, they, they put you straight into to active duty in the army. So you go in as an officer and, um, you know, your job is to, to be a dentist and take care of troops and stuff. So it's just pretty sweet. That's pretty cool. Sweet. And how long do you have to like, um, like with the contract of that, like how long is the commitment after you finish school to like stick with the military? Sure. So, so my specific commitment, I signed up before I got into school. Yeah. Um, and my contract was four years. So I signed a four year contract they paid for four years of dental school and then I would owe four years um, of service after I graduated. From That's an school. awesome deal. You take that all day. <laughs> yeah. So like, yeah. So, so I still have classmates that are like, yeah. you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars in debt. Yeah. Um, and you know, granted they, they can do technically whatever they want, but mm-hmm. um, it's, for me, it was like a no brainer. Like I, you know, I was, I was uh, lucky enough to, to get a, a scholarship to undergrad as well. So um, I, I didn't have to take out loans and I was just like, you know, if I can get through my education without having to pay for stuff, like I'm generally all about it. So, yeah. 
yeah. so You're pretty the, far ahead of the game this way <laughs> <laughs> so initially i was like hey man like if, if i don't have to pay for dental school like yeah at the time like my i think my classmates it was like around four hundred thousand dollars yeah it's crazy and i was just like yeah. you know if i don't have to to pay that over my lifetime then like that's you know i would like that and then i was looking at the benefits and everything and yeah. for my for my situation it was just like a no-brainer yeah um, so yeah. that yeah that's what i ended up doing Plus, you're in a pretty cool place right now. So, um, uh, I'm just in Germany, yeah. In Germany, yeah. So, so, how long like have you been posted there for now? So, I've I've been here uh, like almost four years, like three and a half years right now. Okay, so the whole time like you've been there pretty much. Uh, no, so I so I graduated in 2013. Yeah. Um, I uh, went to an AEGD program. Oh yeah. Um, so the the army has like six um, 12 month programs. Mm-hmm. Um, so I went to uh, an AGD in South Carolina. Um, and that was a year. Um, and then once I finished that, then I, um, got orders to come to Germany as a, okay. as a German okay. dentist. So, so yeah, so I've been here for ever since then. Okay. Have you learned any German or, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so everyone shows up like, yeah, I'm going to learn the language. I'm going to, it know, looks so hard, man, that the words so are so German. long. I'm like, cause the alphabet's like kind of similar, but you're like, man, like it's like 20 alpha, like letters just like jumbled together. <laughs> yeah. Well, like when, when they have like a, a way of describing something, they just add all the words to make one big word. Yeah. <laughs> so you just sit there for like minutes trying to figure out what's going on. And yeah. Uh, have you got into a uh, Bundesliga at all? Do you watch my soccer? Or? Yeah, actually. So I went to, I went to a couple games. Um, we went to an FC Nuremberg game okay. um, like two or three years ago, but they yeah. just got it right relegated into like the second league. So yeah. that was, it was like cool. Tickets were cheap. Yeah. Um, I got to go to a Champions League game with oh, no way. Bayern Munich at the Allianz Arena. So that That's was like great. really, really yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, is you know, I, I didn't realize how expensive Champions League tickets were until like after. So I probably won't ever do it again. But yeah, it was, but it's like a big deal though. It's like pretty. It's like a, it one of those bucket list kind of things. Like, it was like one of the most amazing things. And they ended up, they played like Shakhtar Donetsk. Yeah, Donetsk yeah, like I don't know how, team. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how to pronounce it, but um, it was just like a slaughter. It was like seven zero or something. Yeah. Like it was super. Cool. Yeah, the European like uh, f- like atmosphere like is like it's not matched in like North America. Like the fans here no, like. No like uh go raptors go it's like they're like they have songs and like it's like it's legit like it's like yeah and uh dude the stadium was like so packed it was amazing yeah, yeah. Um, that's awesome <laughs> one of one of like the goals i kind of had was trying to go to like a, a game in every uh major country that we went to yeah so we got to see uh we got to see barcelona play oh no way barcelona. Like, we went one time and like yeah. that was really cool um that was i was back when they had like messi neymar and uh yeah. suarez, suarez like all yeah. um and then we went to Manchester like in the fall, but they weren't, yeah. it was like at the weekend, they weren't playing any games. Oh man, that sucks. Yeah. So it's like, we were trying to go to Old Trafford or something and yeah. just, no, it it's didn't a, work out. But. I think, uh, is it Dortmund that has that American player like Perisic or something? Like the young American guy? <sighs> to be honest, I am not sure. I, so I didn't, I stopped following soccer pretty much. Well, football, I guess. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I, started, I stopped following it when I graduated dental school, actually. Oh, so really? Coming, coming out here, like I, like, I played FIFA in dental school and stuff. Yeah. I was, like, really into it. And then yeah. when I came out here, I was just, like, you know. Now you're worried about Muller and stuff. So. <laughs> <laughs> just try, trying to do my job right. And, yeah. you know. Awesome, man. So um, when did you, like, decide you wanted to do dentistry? Was that, like, during undergrad or, like, before? Even, like, you started undergrad, you kind of had a rough idea of, like, that's what you wanted to do? Yeah, so, um, like, it popped into my head when I was, like, 13 or 14. It just mm-hmm. popped into my head one day, like, oh, I should be a dentist. And I just, like, didn't know why. Uh, <laughs> you know, just, just, like, didn't think anything about it. But I was, you know, that sounds cool. Like, I, I could probably do it. Didn't Still didn't have, like, any idea what it was about. Yeah. But I was like, ah, you know, I'll, I'll see what I can do. Um, and I was, you know, science and math were, like, my strong subjects. Mm-hmm. Uh, horrible, like, business classes and yeah. um you know, economics classes and stuff. So I was talking to my parents about it and uh, my mom had a dentist who was uh, one of her friends from college. So she yeah. emailed him, asked him like, Hey, you know, my son Kevin's trying to be a dentist. Um, do you have any, you know, op- uh, like uh, ideas for him or any, any recommendations or suggestions? And, and he said, uh, Hey, I'm going on a mission trip this summer for like medical and dental uh, dental stuff with a college that, that he was associated with. And he's like, just have him come along with us and he can, you know, kind of get exposed to it stuff. And so it's pretty cool. Yeah, I was like, yeah, let's do it. Like that sounds fun. I, I liked going on mission trips anyways. And so we went to Guatemala and, um, got to help out and like, you know, let me take my own tooth out, which was like, you know, he got everything like super loose. And I just went over there and like, <laughs> it out. And I was like, 
I was like, oh man, this is a rush. Like, this is so crazy. Did you and, get it up uh, on Instagram? <laughs> <laughs> not yet. No, actually, I still have a, I still have a picture of it. Someone yeah. had a disposable camera and oh, snapped nice. the picture, like, as I like had a force set taking it out. And nice. that was like my first real exp- exposure to it. And I was like, dude, this is amazing. I gotta, I gotta figure out how to do this the rest of my life. So yeah, I was like, you know, like I said, I was like 14 ish when I've, when I decided and I kind of just, you know, hunker down and I was like, this is what I want. So, you know, every, all the, all the decisions I made growing up were like geared towards that. So I was, I was like the nerd that like stayed in and studied versus like going out and, you know, partying and stuff. And I was just, that was my thing. I was like, if there's something I want to do, then I'm just going to, you know, do anything I can to, to get it. So that's pretty cool, man. So another thing that I've uh, asked a lot of people on the show, um, uh, cause I know like a lot of new guys are like, debating it back and forth and it's like uh, pros and cons of like doing like an AGD for example um now I know maybe like you had to do it based on like you know your agreement with um like your scholarship and stuff with the military but like what was your experience doing the AGD in terms of like did it provide like enough clinical value like experience for you that you got to like try it out like many things and also like what do you think of like the difference between like a GPR and an AGD like is there any like much difference like because I know a lot of GPRs are more like surgical heavy like you're working in a hospital maybe like medically mm-hmm. compromised patients and all that yeah. Uh, whereas AGD you might be like, you know, doing some bigger like dental cases. Um, so like, what was your experience in that year in terms of like, clinically, like you get like a lot of stuff that you didn't know in dental school and like, how confident were you clinically when you grad, like finished that one year? Sure. Um, so, so every, so I'll start by saying that like all the, the AGD programs of the army are, are a little bit different just because the, the bases that they're at are different as well. So yeah. the, the place that I was at was a, um, basic, well, not basic training, but like sort of a basic training, um, like, or more advanced initial training. Um, and so what that means is there's like a lot of like 18, 19, 20 year old kids that like just finished basic. And then they show up here and they're like here for a couple months, just learning how to do their job in the army. Yeah. And so what that meant for us is that there's like an endless supply of third molar cases. Oh yeah. I was going to say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like quite literally an endless supply. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's a lot of kids who like, uh, just never went to a dentist growing up. And so yeah. that's their first, their first time ever getting a dental exam. And so there's, you know, a ton of stuff to do. That's um, awesome. and then also like the drill sergeants who we would take care of as well, you know, obviously they, they've been in for a long time. Yeah. And so we, we had our own, like there's a big hospital on base too. So we had like a ton of, uh, more experienced, like, uh, patient pool to work with as far as that goes. So, so that's, that was my experience. Um, so it was like really surgery heavy. Uh, as far as like, you know, extractions go. Um, whereas like other places have, have, uh, you know, more pro stuff or more endo stuff. Um, but my personal experience was absolutely amazing. Like I I tell everybody as often as I can, like it was the best, the best year I've ever spent in education in my life. Um, and if I could like do it again, I would do it a hundred (laughs) percent of the time. And that's just me. Like other people were like, you know, they hated it. They're like, I can't wait to finish this so I can like do my own thing. And, um, I, I got out of school feeling like, um, I I knew a lot about parts of dentistry, but I didn't know how everything fit together. Um, And, and what that, like what my program specifically did for me was like, like connected all the parts in my brain that I like had studied for tests for and that I, you know, (laughs) would like technically know how to do and that like brought everything together. And, um, so it was like, for me is the best thing I've, I've ever done. Um, as far as confidence, like coming out of the program, like I was, you know, still, still relatively young. Um, so I was a little hesitant and nervous about stuff, but, but I found myself capable of doing, um, within reason, almost anything that, that would come in the door or anything that was in my chair. Um, what it also taught me was like, like, obviously this is something that I would not be able to handle. So it gave me an idea of like what I could personally take care of and what I should your comfort zone. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, or, or what I should be referring out. Yeah. Um, what about, so as far uh, as like, yeah. well, sorry, uh, did you guys um, get like IV sedation like in that one year? Like, did you get to do that or? or? Um, so generally, uh, generally speaking in the army, general dentists don't do IV sedation. Okay. Um, unless you're like specially trained and you've yeah. taken courses and stuff. Um, a fair amount um, can do oral sedation um, mm-hmm. if you've had proper training and experience with it. Yeah. Um, so at my program, I didn't have the opportunity for that. Whereas like someone who did another AGD, you know, at a different place, um, did oral sedation. And so they're, they would be able to do that. Excuse me. Uh, like anywhere else that they would go. Yeah. Um, so I, I personally didn't have, have that experience. We did tons of nitrous with our surgery cases. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but as far as like uh, sedation type stuff, that's that was as far as my experience went. Yeah. So so because the reason I asked like mostly is um because I've been like trying to do like a bit more third mold. Like I didn't do a GPR or anything. So like out of school, I've been working. And um, I've been trying to do like a bit more like third molar cases and stuff. And uh, like I took a course recently and tried getting a little bit more comfortable. But the problem I have is like a lot of people are like nervous or like anxious mm-hmm. about doing it just with local, right? Yeah. Uh, so I'm like looking now, like I did my uh, like oral sedation course uh, mm-hmm. like a few months back. Uh, so that's been pretty good. I've done a few cases where like you mix like a triazolam with like nitrous or something like that just to sure. get them pretty good. But yeah, like the IV thing looks pretty cool. And some of that, like I'm maybe looking to like invest into for like the future, but it's pretty like in Canada, like to do the courses, like almost like 20 grand. So it's pretty expensive. Yeah. yeah super. So, <laughs> so like, I don't know, like should I learn how to do like do implants or like do I want to do like IV sedation or like, cause it's like stuff is pretty expensive. So yeah, a, a decent amount of the specialists will do um, sedation type yeah. type cases. Right? Obviously, the oral surgeons do do ton of IV sedation. Yeah, um, I believe I think periodontists can do IV sedation as well. They get trained in the program, and then I think uh, I think endo and maybe pros can do some oral type sedations unless they've had particular experience otherwise. Yeah, yeah that's um, pretty cool. Yeah. And um, do you have any plans to like specialize once uh, you finished up with your commitment mm-hmm. or? Yeah. So actually I got a, I got into pros like two months ago. Oh, nice. Uh, I found out, yeah. So, so I, I, uh, I finally decided I wanted to do something. It took me forever to decide. Yeah. Uh, but I, just, I didn't want to like commit to something and then, um, regret it. Uh, yeah. and gen- generally like if you start a program and then drop out, it's, it's not looked very, yeah. it's not looked upon very highly, especially because like there's one program in the army and if you drop out of it then it's like, <laughs> Yeah. Every, if you, you try to do something else, else they, are, they already know who you are and like, oh, yeah. you're good. So, so I, I, I waited a long time. I started, I started like day one in my residency at the EDD. I was like, dude, I'm going to be a world surgeon. Like, yeah, for sure. Like, I know it. Don't, you can't convince me otherwise. Yeah. And um, during the orientation, we, we all sat down with the surgeons and they, like, they both walked in and they both looked like they'd been awake for like three days. Yeah. <laughs> like zombies. And I was like, no, I don't want to do this. Like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I, I, I value like my quality of life like yeah. too much to like be that dedicated to to everything and so so quickly I was just like all right well now I don't know what I want to do yeah yeah and uh, how long is is process like two years or three years process three years yeah three years okay. yeah that's so a tough I, residency too it's like a lot of, a lot of yeah. lab work like, but it'll be good once you get yeah. through it yeah I just said quality of life and then I'm yeah. sitting here, like, <laughs> <laughs> wanting to do a process residency yeah. but, <laughs> Um, that's awesome. You started that next year then. Yeah. So, uh, army is a little different, uh, like military in general. So yeah. you apply like a year and a half in advance. Okay. And then, um, cause it has to, it's based on like when you actually are eligible to move. Mm-hmm. So I'll, I'll move this summer back to where the program is. Um, but the program starts before I am eligible to move. So, okay. so it starts like July one and I don't move till August. So that's I move and then I, get settled just like you know yeah play, play around as a general dentist for a couple months and then uh and then i'll start in 2019 nice so yeah. uh let's talk because i'm like dentistry for a bit like what are you uh so you've been working so 2013 you graduate so you've been working for like almost five years now um mm-hmm. so what like what do you like enjoyed i obviously like prost you like because you're specializing in that but like in terms of like, your day-to-day like clinical practice uh what have you been enjoying doing what have you like not enjoyed as much like clinically like what procedures sure. Um, so I started like out of the programs, like I said, we, we had a really good surgery experience. We yeah. had like, like two full-time surgeons. We got like OR experience. Yeah. Um, but it was mostly just like regular clinical, um, it's like third molar stuff. So, so when I graduated and, and came out here, like I was mostly doing, um, like impacted thirds for like probably 50% of my, um, my day. And then other than that, it was like just trying to take care of like really emergent type stuff, like people with like infections or abscesses or like huge cavities or a mouthful of cavities or, yeah. you know, who knows what, she's like, whatever comes in the doors is what, what I was doing um, or referring, I guess. But yeah, so I started out doing tons of surgery. Um, and then the, the more we got working, um, you know, the surgery needs kind of died down. So now I was just doing more like restorative stuff. Um, Lot, lots of amalgam to start with yeah. um, and, and there's still like a lot of amalgam that, that gets done um, but I've switched more to like just composite restorative dentistry now mostly because I'm better at it and I'm more confident yeah. that it's going to yeah. last longer than I don't think I could do an amalgam right now if someone like sat me down and like can you just do like a MOD amalgam I, like I think I'd struggle to like I've done it like <laughs> once in dental school <laughs> yeah no the, the fun thing was like uh, 
like the amalgam's still like very important for yeah. for the stuff that we do just because if like like if people are getting deployed and like uh, yeah. they need they need something like today and it needs to last you know a ton of time and and if they're like really high carries risk or if they have horrible hygiene um yeah. you know at, sometimes you're doing a disservice by trying to place composite in certain places it's, yeah. it's not going to last they're not going to take care of it it's going to fail catastrophically yeah. and uh, amalgam is like proven to last you know at, at least to work the best in certain cases I'm not saying yeah. it's for everything obviously but That's but cool. so so there's like a ton of experience of like just fire hose of like you have you know two walls that need to be uh convergent and you need to place an amalgam on like number 15 and there's like you know half the tooth like below the soft tissue and it's like yeah. you have to figure it out and yeah. so there's it, it was like almost a game to me to like try to get like really hard cases or try to try to challenge myself like restoratively to like how i could accomplish certain things when when it's like you know really difficult um <laughs> so uh in terms of like uh like ce and stuff for the past few years since you're over there like are you like does the military provide that if like travel for it or do you like do you use like whatever local stuff is in germany available or like how are you getting your ce yeah so um so the army provides continuing education um that satisfies the like the army requirement annually which i think is i think it's like 30 30 hours annually um and then that most mo like all of that is it it works with the state as well. So I have to have a dental license in a particular state in order to be yeah. uh, like able to work. Um, so I, I, I have my license in Idaho. I've never, never worked there. <laughs> I've been there once, but yeah. uh, that's, that's where my license is. And they require like, I think it's 15 every year, or every two years or something. Yeah. Um, so, so they'll provide um, enough continuing education for you to meet, meet all your uh, you know requirements. Um, if you want anything more than that, then it would be on your own to, to go like take a course somewhere. Like I, I took a course in Athens last year um, that that's I thought cool. was like super cool. And, and yeah. so I, you know, I paid for it. I flew out there. I stayed in a hotel. Like, um, I was able to, you know, take time off of work. Um, yeah. and, and so that, that, you know, as long as you have, there's like, you know, I was allowed to take a couple of days of like, yeah, I'll let you go, you know, take a CE course or something like that. Mm -hmm. But they do provide, um, CE on their own. Like at least in Europe, they, they'll host like a big, um, CE conference like once a year. Um, and so generally it's like a week long thing and, and they'll have a bunch of different speakers and cover just, you know, any imaginable amount of subjects that, that they have and there's like some hands-on stuff but it's mostly mostly lectures yeah um, and how many uh like dentists work with you over where you are right now um my my clinic i think there's like 10 of us oh wow um, but like in the like army total i think there's like a thousand uh like dentists overall so yeah i was like uh, yeah yeah and uh so what like um what like endo system like do you have like a lot of cool toys like where you're working like do they, i'm sure you, like, you guys have like the latest stuff or uh have access um, to some of that cool stuff like do you have like uh like cad cam or like Sarek or um yeah. like, a, like a microscope for endo like what kind of toys do you guys have so we we actually like are pretty outfitted pretty sick at our clinic yeah. right now um it wasn't always that way like when i first got there um I got here like three and a half years ago. It was set up for like surgery and like some simple fillings and like that was it. And now we have an Omnicam. Uh, we have an in-lab like desktop scanner. Uh, we have two mills. We have, um, we just got set up with like a, a wave one system for endo. Yeah. Um, nice. That was like, it was a little difficult to get, but um, my friend had to like buy his own iPad to go along with the system. But um <laughs> He, he was cool with that. So, so yeah. we got that going. Um, unfortunately we don't have a microscope, but we like might be able to get one soon. I'm not, yeah. I'm not really sure. There's, there's a long ordering process that has yeah. to be done for uh, a lot of, a lot of things. Um, I got a composite warmer. That was like the thing I'm most excited about. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I've been using that too. It's nice. <laughs> it's like changed my life completely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the little things in life. <laughs> yeah. It's just a little stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's cool, man. And then, um, so is it like, you have to, like, is like, you just work like Monday to Friday or you have to work like, is there on call or how's that schedule work out? Yeah. So, so the, the way the call schedule works is like once a week, it changes, changes providers. Um, and it's spaced evenly apart to where you don't, you don't have to take it a lot. Um, but you, you have like an emergency phone and, um, they'll call you, uh, like the, the way it works, like the military police kind of like run stuff on nights and weekends. And so if people have problems, they'll call the, the MPs and then the MPs have the number to the call phone. Yeah. And they'll tell us what's going on, give us the contact info. And then, um, 
we have to determine if it's like worth coming in for, or if it's like, just show up to the clinic, you know, like the next day that it's open. Yeah. Um, and most of the time it's just like, yeah, just come see us in the morning. Like, you know, we don't need to do you know, stuff right now. And then other times it's like, yeah, you know, come in right now. It's like two in the morning. It's like, we got to see you, you know, don't let this wait. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. And then do you have like, so is there a specialist there with you or if you have to refer, you have to like refer to like a local like specialist, like just working in Germany. Yeah. So, um, we have pretty much every available specialty that we can refer to. Um, there's like, you know, we have a surgeon, a periodontist, prosthodontist, endodontist. Um, we have orthodontists and, um, there's pediatric dentists as well. Oh, um, over, overseas, especially like we'll, we'll, we'll sometimes see family members if we can. Mm -hmm. Um, and generally the kids can go see the pediatric dentist if there's space available too. So yeah. It's kind of like we so we're still able to like take care of everyone and that's awesome. Refer and then if there's anything super specific, I mean honestly, I can't. We've never sent someone like to a German dentist mm -hmm. who's like active duty for anything because we can take care of yeah everything ourselves. So it's it, it is really nice and also like I know you asked a question a while ago, but like I don't like doing endo. So like if there's any mol <laughs> molar endos, like I'll either like ask my friends if they want to do it or I'll just yeah. send it to. Ended honest. Ended honest. This guy, you go into process now, so you don't have to deal with it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, That's so. awesome. So, um, how about like implants? Have you guys, did you get much experience like during your AGD doing that or, or since like you've been working over there in Germany? Or is that something that you want to like focus on like um, during your process residency mostly? Yeah. So, Im implants are like the same as uh, sedation type stuff. So, like yeah. some general dentists um, get training at their training programs and then they're, you know, they're allowed to do it. I didn't get training at the program. So uh, that's not something that like I could just show up and be like, Hey, let me do this. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd be like, no, you're crazy. You've never done one before. <laughs> so um, at this point, yeah, I'm just going to wait until I go to the residency before I, uh, before I learn how to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and then if I decide like, like I, I would be open to doing a, like a big course after the residency. Like if I decided like, I know there's, dozens of different options for stuff but yeah um, like generally I, i'm kind of like if i'm going to learn how to do it in a formal program then I, I probably won't go and like pay for a course before that yeah um, so that, yeah. that being said i did go to a like aesthetics course in greece so <laughs> i can't i can't quite say that but was that good was it what was that one called oh dude it's amazing um what was it called it was a uh, tribune cme was the um was the the name of the company yeah. and it was uh it was like advanced anterior aesthetics nice. or something like that um there was a there were two two prosthodontists and um a couple of general dentists that that taught it um ed mclaren is one of them he's he teaches at uab now yeah in, uh, alabama he's like a crazy good prosthodontist there's a um a greek prosthodontist dr pelicanos he did it as well yeah. um and so it was all like minimally invasive um, anterior ceramics and, uh, they did like a crazy isolation course and like a crazy photography course. And so oh, that's so good. It's um, like, such like useful, like skills. Have you been dogs, doing, uh, dogs. like, yeah. So this past year, like, obviously like since I, um, like started on Instagram, like doing, doing all that. And then like the podcast, um, yeah. like it's been cool. Cause I've been talking to like a lot of general dentists, like from around the world. Yeah. And, uh, I have this one buddy who works in uh, Dubai and he's like a rubber dam, like everything. So yeah. <laughs> um his name's omar and he's got like a nice like instagram page like he's growing up pretty quickly yeah and uh he kind of like shamed me into like starting to like rubber dam everything <laughs> so like i've been since like uh it was like my new year's resolution pretty much like my new year's yeah. dental resolution i'm like, gonna rubber dam like every resto and yeah. like it's been like life-changing man like um, it is it really is like it's like it's clean like you're like focused on like what you're doing you're not like retracting you're not worried about mm -hmm. like all this like tongue and like saliva and stuff um and you can actually like, take it just like sits there and just yeah, like, yeah. and there's nothing exactly. else to do. I, th I don't know why like this this is like rolled every time i'm like oh i'm rubber yeah. dam like they roll their eyes but i don't know why i'm like it makes your job easier like <laughs> yeah like it literally it only makes it easier it, like yeah. once it's on at least getting yeah, getting rubber dam on, like, yeah it can be tricky sometimes uh sometimes. but yeah the photography thing too like i recently bought like a macro lens got like a ring flash nice um but yeah i'm still like working it out and like trying to incorporate it. it's like a little bit tedious to like 
like put the rubber dam on like take a picture like prep it take a picture like yeah but you got like i think you got to do it if you want to <laughs> absolutely yeah. yeah photography is like one of the things i so I started doing it yeah. about this time last year and it's like changed completely changed the way that i i view dentistry and, and practice as well um and, and same with like rubber dams like those yeah. those two together probably changed the way that i do dentistry yeah like the most out of at least since doing the residency program like it's changed changed me the most by far yeah and what's your like um how do you like uh incorporate photography into like your workflow like do you just do it for like new patient exams or are you doing like clinical photos like as you're working or like how do you normally like incorporate that sure so generally like i don't i don't take my camera with me every day um if i'm doing uh, anything in the interior that that's you know easy to take photos of um then i'll then i'll take photos of of stuff like that like if i had like I've had a couple interior crown or like veneer cases that I'm like, Hey, I want to, you know, document this and show before and afters and patients are always cool with it. They like seeing the pictures. And, um, I, I use it a lot for like critiquing my own work, which is the main reason that I, I do it is yeah, I just, that's the best. You learn so much. Like I've, I've been like, I'm, I'm a big lurker on Instagram. And so I follow like, you know, hundreds of pages and yeah, yeah. Um, I, I don't, I don't really like posting very much. I just like looking at other people's stuff. And so I'll see it and I'll just be like, man, like that's amazing. Sometimes I'll see stuff and say, I think I can do that. And then I'll try to, you know, as best I can relate it to what I'm doing or incorporate it into my work. Yeah. Um, and then I'll, I'll, you know, take photos to document it. I'll just like come home and stare at my computer for like, you know, hours and just like, <laughs> how could I have done this better? Like, yeah. I'll be thinking to myself, like, how am I going to, you know, deliver the case? And, um, and then, you know, even for simple restorative stuff, like I'll, I'll sometimes take pictures. I don't do it very much just because like you said, it's a big hassle. Yeah. And, that's pretty you know, cool man i love that yeah. like uh i think it's changed a lot like when i first started working like this path like uh so i graduated uh you know i went to the university of melbourne uh, australia yeah. and so i came like i'm from toronto so i came back to toronto and um you know like student loans and like, all this stuff like i was like really like worried about the money side of things i'm like so every day i'd be like oh how much did i like produce how much did I this and that yeah. and like i'd be upset like if someone cancels i'm like oh man like my production and like i was like not happy like for the first like six months like like my mentality was like that. Yeah. And I feel like the past six months, like I've changed it to like, okay, let me just like perfect the craft side of things. Like the money, like whatever, like I'm making good money. Like I'm not like starving or anything. So like, yeah, yeah. Uh, like things are okay. So uh, for the past six months, I've been doing that. Like I said, I started rubber damming and like, I'm just like so much happier, like enjoying the work much more and like yeah, trying to get sure. better that way. Like I, I think for like with new grads too, like that's like the way you got to do it. Like the money side of things, you can't be like stressed day in, day out. Like, Oh, how much am I producing? How much am I collecting? Like this and that, like clinical mastery. I think like, is that what, that's what we're like, we're pursuing right now. So like, and that's like the way yeah, to be happy and like enjoy it. Yeah. I've, I've totally had like a similar experience to that. So the first couple of years, like when I got out of my AGD, I was doing surgery, like surgery was like enough to, to motivate me to, to go to work and, you know, do, do my best and everything. And after a while, like I kind of just got tired and bored and I was just like, I didn't have something that I was working towards or, or looking forward to doing. And yeah. I was kind of just like, I had like maybe two years where I would just show up and, and do my job. And, and then, you know, I would, I would go home and I, I would have friends. Like I had one friend in particular and, and uh, like all he would do is just talk to me about dentistry and stuff. And I was like, yeah. that's cool. But like, you know, when I go home, like I don't want to think about dentistry or anything. And yeah. This was before I, I was like following the Instagram dentist people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, um, after a while, like I started like seeing all these people post and I was like, that's like so fake. Like there's no way people <laughs> can do that. And then yeah. after a while it turned into like, Oh my gosh, like these people are so insanely good. And then yeah. I was like, well, like, why can't I try at least try to do that? I'm yeah. obviously not saying I can, but I was just like, what's stopping me from trying to be that good. Mm -hmm. And then over time, like I, so I started using some rubber dam. I started, uh, you know, trying to do, more with the time I had or trying to do like, you know, significantly better. Like they book us for like 60 minute, um, restorative appointments. And so it's yeah. like, if I have an occlusal, I could probably do it in like maybe 20 minutes. And then, yeah. and then I have like 40 minutes. So it's like, I could either go 40 minutes and just like sit in my office or I could spend an extra like 10 or 15 or 20 minutes, like trying to make it look really nice and like yeah. really like anatomical or like really aesthetic. Um, and then that turned into like, I got, you know, quick enough at that where I was like, well, maybe I can like add an extra tooth to it and then I can do the same thing. Mm -hmm. And then now it's like, you know, how, how much can I do in like a 60 minute appointment that looks like, you know, 
Great, what, yeah. I, what I would be like very happy with. Yeah. So now I'm trying to do like two or three teeth or something like that. And, yeah. You know, That's but, cool. but that like motivation to like, try to like challenge myself and like always do better than the last one. And, yeah. and that, that gave me like so much motivation to like, so now it's like I show up to work and I'm like, I'm ready to like kill it today. I'm ready to like, you know, do all this like crazy stuff. And yeah, it's cool, man. Cause you guys like, uh, like I'm pretty hard on myself too, like in terms of like my standards. So like, uh, so I had this patient last week and I did like a couple of interior restaurants on them. Um, and I was like the whole week I was like, man, I, I did like pretty bad job. I think I wasn't like happy with it and stuff. Yeah. And then like, she came back, uh, like yesterday to like do some other fillings. And I had a look, I'm like, man, that looks really good. Like, I was like, <laughs> I don't yeah. want to like toot my own horn, but like, I was like, I was like so hard on myself. Like no reason. Like it looked actually like pretty good. Uh, yeah. but I think it's nice, man. Cause if, if you're always like trying to get better and like trying new things and like, it makes work playing, right? Like you go to work and like play around, like you're like, okay. Yeah, totally. just, so you're not just like turning your mind off and like doing class twos all day. Cause you can do that in your sleep at this point probably. But like, yeah. if you actually want to make it look nice and make sure you have like nice rounded, like marginal ridge and everything, like it just, it just makes the job more enjoyable. So, um, that's awesome, man. Thanks a lot for, uh, for coming on. Um, I wish you all the best in your residency. I know you got that coming up in a, probably a year or so. Um, uh, yeah. so we'll see if, uh, maybe once you start your residency, you can start like a little, <laughs> Yeah, Instagram page and <laughs> um, post all your lab work and like everything that you're doing. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So all the best. Thanks. Thanks a lot for coming on and, and uh, we'll stay in touch and hopefully we'll do another episode soon. All right. Thanks for having me, man. Take care. Take care.